Let's turn to page number 530. Let's do the first and last. Save, saved as we all stand. service our sound man stepped out to I think we got some crackling hopefully we'll get it all corrected all right but uh, this dear brother and his family you know are, are surrendered to go to Japan and uh, that's a long way away and I'm talking about a long distance anyway and uh, so God God has been helping them and blessing them and let me let me share a blessing that happened this past couple days they went to the uh, Ringgold Georgia camp meeting with brother McNeese and and had financial needs because they're leaving in about two and a half weeks to go to Japan for a survey trip. And did you know that in that one meeting alone, the Lord, the Lord allowed folks to give Brother Chris White $7,000. Isn't that great? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And so uh, I'm happy for him. And, and uh, they'll be going soon. And you pray for him. Brother Chris, thrill for you. Where'd you go? Oh, there you are on that side. Thrill for you. You want to say a word? Say a word and then pray for us. All right? Amen. I just want to thank the Lord for saving us. Uh, my family's saved, I'm saved, and I go to the church, the best church I could ever imagine. The Lord's blessed us like I couldn't imagine. Uh, mission board, we got another family of missionaries. It's just, uh, we're just one big family, and we just love y'all. Y'all just keep praying for us. Uh, there's some financial needs with my, my family, and I'm trying to help them out. Uh, my mom and them's really struggling. They've been in the hospital for uh, six days now. And uh, they're, 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 they're struggling, so the Lord really came. It's not just us going on this trip. It's, uh, I wanted to help my mom and them because uh, it's drained everything they got. Y'all pray for them because they sure do need it. <clears throat> dear Heavenly Father, uh, I want to thank you for saving me, dear Lord. I want to thank you for you pro providing for us, dear Lord, whenever, whenever we feel like well, we don't know what we're going to do or where we're going to go or what's going to happen, dear Lord. That's when you show up, dear Lord. We love you. We love you with all our heart. Thank you for saving us, dear Lord. Thank you for this church. Thank you for my pastor, dear Lord. I love him dearly. I pray that you'll just help him today. You'll touch him, anoint him, dear Lord, and just help him to preach the power of the word, dear Lord. I pray that if there's anyone that's lost here today, that they'll come to know you as our personal Savior, dear Lord. Thank you for everything you've done for us, dear Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for us, dear Lord. We love you, dear Lord. I pray that you'll continue to just be with the Robinson family. They're dear to our hearts, dear Lord. 
be with Brother Yank and his family, dear Lord. I just pray that you'll just watch over them and, and give them the grace that they need, dear Lord. Uh, it's a daily battle, I know, dear Lord, but just daily. Please just help them, dear Lord. We love them, dear Lord, and, and I, just, I just pray that you'll just watch over us as we go throughout the day. Watch over us in the next few weeks, dear Lord, as, as things is about to change drastically, dear Lord. We love you. I pray that you'll be with the sick, the people that can't be here, and I pray that you'll be with the people that's backslid that's just got out of here, dear Lord. We pray for them every day, dear Lord. I pray that one day that they'll just come back to us, dear Lord. Come back to you. We love you, and we ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right, you may be seated all over the building. If anybody has any chopsticks or samurai swords, you can bring them to church tonight. Give them to Brother Chris, all right, and his family. We welcome you. We're glad you're all here. We appreciate you coming to the house of the Lord this morning. I want to welcome Brother Dale Gibson over on my right. Wave at me, Brother Dale. Glad he's able to be with us, still in a boot. Uh, Brother Jonathan is still uh, messed up as well uh, from his surgery, but he was able to go to uh, Liberty, South Carolina, and preach today for Brother Jack Shook, the homecoming. So pray for Brother Jonathan. Brother Robbie's off preaching up north in, I think, Indiana. Pray for all these men that are gone, all right? The Lord will take care of them, bless them, and use them. We want to remind you of the service tonight. I'd like to remind you of the service Wednesday night. Both services, keep those in mind. Next Sunday is Anniversary Sunday. Everybody's invited. I'll not, I'll not be preaching. We have a special guest preacher. I do not know who's coming yet. They never let me know till sometime Saturday evening, but I, they're always great. That's all I know. They're always great. So uh, we want you to plan on being here both services next Sunday for Anniversary Sunday, and then right after the morning service, we're going to the Fellowship Hall for a nice meal that's going to be provided, prepared for, well, provided by the church, but prepared by the Crooker family. So uh, everybody's invited to stay for the meal next Sunday afternoon, all right? All right, young people, you're going August 12th on a Saturday to Gateway, August 19th to Packlet Road in Gaffney, and that's 5 p.m. the first one, 6 p.m. on the second one, all right? Our ushers are going to come on in. Brother Jonathan Herpel's back from Montana. I think he said he has 50 sets, maybe 25. Did you say 50? Wow, he's got 50 sets of the Jubilee. These are only $10. They look beautiful. I want you to open them up and look at them. They look beautiful. This is the Jubilee preachers plus those five or six that we had available before the Jubilee got here because there was a surplus of CDs. So you got really about 14 messages in there, maybe 15 messages for, for $10. All we're doing is paying for the jacket, the CDs, the, the printing, and everything. So see him. Immediately after service, you'll get all that you need. If you want two or three sets, we're good with that. We're not going to give you a discount, but anyway, we're good with If you want two or three sets, all right, you can't beat that. Get a, get a Jubilee set, and may the Lord bless you, all right? God bless you while the choir sings. The ushers are going to serve you. Go ahead. Play, play Lauren. <laughs>
Trey, step up here, Brother Trey. Where'd he go? I saw, there he is right back there. Going to pray for us. And uh, men, uh, the sign-up sheet is down front for Lake Greenwood. That's September the 8th. See the sign-up sheet down front. There's also down front the Gatlinburg information and all that you need about the trip, the honeymoon trip to Gatlinburg. Everything you ever need is right down here. And all the announcements and information you need about what's going on at Mountain View Baptist Church is in the bulletin on a weekly basis, all right? So if you'll get the bulletin, you'll, you'll stay informed about what's going on. Now, just before he prays, Brother Yank, would you stand up, please? I want you to know that we love you, love your family. Uh, this dear brother will be leaving after service today, him and his family, to go uh, be with some of his other family. And if you got the call yesterday, and uh, we're so sorry, just so sorry to hear of the uh, terrible tragedy on Lake Kiwi uh, involved his sister and she's passed. And uh, we don't know any of the details. I'm sure he doesn't know a whole lot right now. But uh, in days ahead, they will. And, um, but be praying for them, please. His mom, his mom, leaving Kentucky this morning, nine-hour trip all the way down here. And you know, you know, you know what she's facing. So um, let's pray for them right now. And then uh, the daughters, just everybody. We'll have details as far as the receiving of friends and all those other things. Probably going to be in Bowling Springs, you reckon? Maybe Spartanburg? Not, not sure. Okay. But we'll let everybody know when we find out, all right? But we love you, you hear me? We love you. And I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Will you go on pray with us? Pray for the family, please. Pray for the family. Lord, we sure love you. And I thank you for this privilege to be here this morning. God, we don't dare want to take it for granted. I thank you for God's house. Lord, I thank you for Calvary that put a desire in our heart to be here. And I thank you, Lord, for the blood, Lord, that... Lord, that was shed, dear God, that we could be free from sin. And, Lord, there's, there, there's therefore now no condemnation. I sure am thankful for that this morning. And, God, I bless your holy name for what you've done for me. I thank you for the house of God. Thank you for Mountain View Baptist Church. Thank you for letting us gather here again this morning. Thank you for what we learned in Sunday school. And God, thank you for the shout of the king in the camp. Lord, I sure am thankful for the rejoicing that's already we've already enjoyed. And Lord, we pray for the preaching today this morning. God, we look forward to hearing the bread of life being broke to us. And Lord, we ask that you'd bless the pastor. Lord, give him liberty to preach. I, I pray it'd be easy for him to preach. I pray that we'd Lord, that we'd uh, uh, have a receptive heart and ear and mind. And God, that you'd captivate our minds for a little while this morning. God, help us to be fixed on thee. And Lord, we just ask that you'd meet every need among the congregation. We just ask in Jesus' name especially that you'd please, dear God, Lord, help uh, Brother Yank and Miss Rebecca and all their families. Certainly Miss uh, Miss Becky as she travels down, Lord, we pray you give them traveling grace. And God bless the family. Encourage your hearts. Bless Autumn and Krista and all the family. I beg you. God, please meet the need. Encourage hearts. And God, comfort them, Lord, in this, Lord, in this time of tragedy that they're going through in this valley of their face. And I beg you, Lord, that you'd be real to them. God, we've seen you do it before. We've seen you pour out your grace already. And we're, Lord, well acquainted with it, God. And I bless you for it. And I thank you for what you've done. And I just pray that you're blessed today. God, help our hearts, Lord. God, give us a, give us a great day in your house. Lord, bless the service tonight. God, would you let everybody be well and able to be here again tonight. Lord, we pray for a great service. Lord, have your way in everything said and done here. God, will be careful to thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, see you now, Clark. See you now. Amen. As I look back on all of my days, so many times, so many ways, I have been blessed. And all I can say is God has been good. Yes, he has. Sometimes life brings sorrow and pain. Sometimes the tears fall like the rain. But through it all, he never changed. God is still good.
Let's turn to page number 354. First and last, leaning on the everlasting arms. About uh, about the uh, the Gatlinburg trip. Uh, if you need, if you're going, get the information down front. And then uh, listen, we really need you to start signing up with the uh, September 8th Lake Greenwood. That's just around the corner. We're going to go to Greenwood this year instead of Camp Marion or Marion, and so it's different. But uh, you'll enjoy. It. I, I think we're going to be camping and all that kind of stuff. So uh, looking forward to that. Get get the uh, get. Make sure you sign up immediately after the service, all right? Again, thank you for our visitors being here. Some are in the balcony. Several are in the balcony. But, uh, hopefully, well, I'm looking around. I don't see many empty pews, but there is some empty spots. 
if you want to try to find them tonight, all right? Y'all ready? Come on. We'll call them off guard, but they'll be ready. This is Mark Jordan and his family. They're going to sing one. Lord willing, we'll be preaching in just a little bit, all right? Come on, turn your mics on. All right, thank you. I'm sure glad when uh, I was thinking about Brother Yank this morning. Of course, your heart's burdened. Your heart's burdened when your family, when your church family goes through things. And I'm glad, though, that we're a part of the family of God. When we do go through things, we got one another's shoulders we can lean on. We can uh, share one another's burdens. That's one of the privileges of being saved. Uh, I didn't get saved so I could share my heartaches and my, my troubles with people. But that sure is one of the side benefits comes along with it, being saved, knowing you're going to go to heaven one day when you die. And uh, I tell you what, since we've been here at Mountain View, which has been about six or seven years I've seen so many things seem like come and go through people's life, and I'm sure glad we've got a church family. So we, those times come and go that we've got one another that we can lean on. So hope it'll be a blessing to you as we try to sing. Thank you so much for singing that real quick for us. Take your Bible, everybody, and go with me to Matthew chapter 5. Hope you brought a copy of God's Word to God's house for you this morning on Sunday morning. Matthew chapter 5. We're a Bible standing and Bible preaching church. We don't, we don't make no apology for that. We appreciate God's Word, and that's what the church is for, to propagate and publish and promote and preach and declare and teach the Holy Scriptures. Amen. Believe it or not, we're going to be going to one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite principles or favorite truths regarding or, or contained in the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is Matthew chapter five, chapter six, and chapter seven. All of that, I want to show you something. Go back to chapter five. Look in verse one. Seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. Underline the word his disciples and them. So automatically you find out that this address, Brother Ronnie Phelps, is to believers. This address is to the disciples, Brother Ben, to those that knew him in a relationship. And we call it the Sermon on the Mount because he took them up into the mountain there. So, and I've dealt with this before, but not like we are this morning, all right? 
That's what's the beauty of the Bible is it's different every time we look at it. Matthew 5, look in verse 38. Going to be some of the most unusual scripture we've ever dealt with. Matthew 5, and that sounds good, Brother Philip. I don't know what's happened, but you've got it, you've got it sounding good, and I appreciate the, the time and effort to get all that right. Verse number 38. Ye have heard. He's talking to everybody in his audience. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. I didn't think I'd get any amens. A man was praying, Miss Barbara, and this is a true story. Look at me, everybody. A man was praying. True story. Watch it. A man was praying. He was a soldier. He was in his barracks where they stayed. That's called the barracks, right? Down on his knees by his bed praying. You know what they did, Brother Mike? One of the other soldiers, full of hostility, took his boots. He took one. I read it yesterday. Took one, hit the man right in the head. Brother Rick, the man kept praying. Took the other boot, threw it, hit the man right in the head, and hit him again. And the man kept praying. It was all over with, never said a word about it, never got any argumentation, no dispute, no retaliation. No retaliation. Everybody laid down, everybody went to bed. The next morning, when the soldier that threw those boots and hit that man woke up, guess what he saw by his bed? Both boots shined buffed, cleaned, and at his feet. I'd sure like to live that way. I don't, but I'd sure like to. No retail, that's what that verse is talking about. No retail, I knew it'd get quiet. I told you, I told you before I started, I told you before I started, it's gonna be the most difficult and hard scripture we've ever dealt with, all right? Verse number, uh, watch this, verse number 40. Now, yeah, did I get verse 39? I think I did. Uh, no, no, no. That, uh, yeah, I got 39. Let's get 40. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. The coat was the inner garment. Let me get it right. I'll make sure I'm right on this. Yeah, the coat was the inner garment. Brother David, the cloak was the outer garment. I didn't know this, but did you know the cloak, the outer garment, Brother Rick, it was also designed to be their blanket at night if they needed, if they were in a place or predicament, Brother Trey, where they needed a blanket. And, and, and Exodus says, in Exodus 22, verse 26 and 27, if you were to receive a man's outer garment or his cloak, you were only supposed to hold it till nightfall. This is an exit. You're supposed to give it back. Here Jesus said, if a man sues you at the law, don't just give him your inner garment. Give him that which is not even demanded by the law. Give him your outer garment. No retaliation. But also, we're not supposed to be insistent on our own rights. Say amen. I said we're not supposed to be insisting. I knew it'd get quiet. We're not supposed to insist on our own rights. Look in verse number 41. Here's where I'm going to go, Lord willing, this morning. Verse 41. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain, go with him too. Yeah. I'm going to explain that in a little bit. Verse number 42. Here's a good scripture. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to shine on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even, do not even the publicans the same? 
And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the public and so, in verse 48, be ye therefore perfect, spiritually mature, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Let's bow for prayer and ask God to help us today, all right? Brother, uh, brother Tommy Kirker, if you will, stand and, pr and pray for us, dear brother, if you don't mind. <clears throat> yes, Lord, we do. Yes, thank God. Help me, Lord. Help me. Yes. Help me, Lord. Help me. Amen. I want you to keep your Bibles open to here to Matthew chapter number 5. I want to direct all of your attention again to verse number 41. The Bible said in verse number 41, And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. We're going to be dealing with a subject called going the second mile. Write that down, all right? Going the second mile. Here in Matthew chapter 5, we have the Sermon on the Mount. And I want to say some introductory comments that you need to understand. And here's what they are. In the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord was not legislating any righteousness for the world of the unregenerate. This is not for the unregenerate. However, these are God-honored principles and truths to live by for believers. You and I that are saved, that live among this godless society. In verse number 39, what are we supposed to do when people smite us? When they smite us, turn the other cheek. In verse number 40, I'm not going to get into this this morning, but in verse number 40, what are we supposed to do when people sue us, all right? And even that is dealt with here. Give up that which you are not even required by law to give up the cloak, the outer garment. What are we to do when people smite us? What are we to do when people sue us? And then verse number 41, what are we to do? How are we to respond when people seize us, when they compel us to go a mile? Then on and on. And verse number 42, thankfully, what are we supposed to do when people seek aid from us, when they need our help? I will relate to you 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 17 where the Bible said if uh, you shut up your bowels of compassion and see your brother have need how dwell it the love of God in you there is a proper and a right and a good and a godly and a Christian response to those that are seeking our aid or seeking our assistance now don't anybody get mad but I want to tell you that many 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 times people I seek aid only because of the predicament they find themselves and I'm sorry to tell you but they created the own predicament somebody say amen I, and that's not always the case that's not always the case but many, many, many times that is the case. But however, we have a principle in verse number 42. What is the Lord saying in these uh, truths, these principles in the, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount? Here's what he's saying to our saved heart. He's saying, number one, don't retaliate. Can I get an amen right there? Don't retaliate. It's so easy to retaliate. That's our first impression. That's our first response. The Bible said in verse number 39, 38 again, verse number 39, that, that uh, whosoever shall smite thee on thy cheek, turn to him the other also. He is teaching us a principle, and that principle is self-restraint. Amen. I'm being crucified by the old man. Uh, death to self. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do. I say it's the hardest thing you'll ever do. Uh, when he was reviled, he reviled not again, but he opened not his mouth. Most of us are very, very, very quick uh, to verbally, to verbally retaliate 
while everybody's so quiet, amen? I said most of us are very swift how to retaliate verbally. But the Bible said when you smack you on the right cheek, I turn the other cheek also. What he's trying to preach is, I do not retaliate. That vengeance is the Lord's, amen? He will repay. I know, don't come up here after service and tell me, I already know it. I already know it. you don't have to tell me that you're not gonna let anybody push you over. I know that, that you're not gonna be anybody's door man. I know that. I know you're a man. I know you're manly. I know you're uh, not a wuss. I know you're not a sissy. I know all that stuff. But I also know what that book said. And if looks could kill, I'd be dead right now. But it's all right. I'm simply trying to tell you what Jesus said. Hey, our conduct, our behavior, our response. And there are many times we're all going to get provoked. We're all going to get uh, verbally harassed. We're all uh, maybe even brother being physically harassed but Jesus said do not retaliate that's hard friend you know that's hard is that hard yes that's hard that's hard could I tell you what he's really trying to do right here Miss Michelle he's really trying to draw a comparison between the conduct of the publicans and sinners and those that are believers. That's alluded to in verse number 47. He said, don't the publicans do that? And verse number 46, don't the publicans do the same? He's trying to bring a contrast. He said the contrast is, Brother Daniel, that the publicans and the sinners act this way and the publicans and sinners conduct themselves this way, Brother Bennett, but you that are believers, this is the way I want you to, to conduct yourself. You know it's hard to restrain your tongue. Say amen. You know it's hard to put a, why am I preaching this? I don't even know. You know it's hard to put a guard on that mouth of yours. Somebody say amen. My mouth too, all right. It's so hard, I tell you, when people chide on you and bite on you and, and chew on you and verbally challenge you, verbally harass you or say something to your face, it's so hard to open not your mouth. But I want to tell you, I'm talking about being a believer that's being led by the Holy Ghost and a believer that's being led by the Holy Ghost, he'll have some self-restraint. I said he'll have, well, let me say this, she will have. I have some self-restraint. Say amen. That's verse number 38 and 39. That's not my message. My message is not verse 40. That talks about don't insist on your own right. Everybody wants their own space. Everybody wants their own way. Everybody wants to make sure that nobody's getting the upper hand on them. We all know that. Everybody's demanding their own right. This is my right. Well, you know what God said? God said, now listen, I'm not trying to stir up nothing, all right? I'm not. But God said, if somebody sues you and takes your inner garment, he said, why don't you just say you can have my outer garment as well? In other words, go beyond what the law even expects you to do. I'm talking about Christianity if anybody's listening. I'm talking about Christianity if anybody's, if anybody's got, anybody wants to live this kind of way. I didn't say it was easy. I didn't say I'm an example of it. I'm just preaching the scripture, all right? And Brother Nathan, the scripture says, the scripture is saying, the principle that's taught is don't demand your own right. So I have no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're trying to address. You must be throwing that at somebody. Well, you don't know me like you think you know me because I'm not trying to throw this at anybody. I'm just preaching the scripture and letting it fall where it may. And if it hits my wife upside the head, so be it. If it hits me upside the head, so be it. If it hits David Mabry upside the head, so be it. If it hits Kyle Atkins upside the head, then it's just going to have to hit us upside the head. What I'm trying to say is it's high time that you and I really, really, really put our Christianity in shoe leather. Amen, everybody. Amen. Everybody okay? This is Bible preaching, all right? It's in illustrations. It's in games. This isn't a bunch of illustrations and a bunch of stories. This ain't no emotional tear jerking stuff. This is straight Bible, all right? Straight Bible said number one. And I tell you, man, 
I don't know many people, but I just don't know many people that can do it. And don't retaliate. Don't retaliate. I don't know many people that can do that. I'm just telling you, I don't. I haven't met them. You may know them, but I haven't met them. Mm -mm. No, I haven't met them. But then don't insist on your own right. But then, number three, look in verse 41, everybody. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile. This is something right here. This is unbelievable. This right here, Brother Kyle, is unbelievable. He said, if they compel you to go a mile, first of all, look at the word compel. So they're already asking you to do something, Brother Brian, that you're not naturally inclined to do. Is that right, everybody? They're already asking you to do something that you're not naturally inclined to do. If they compel you to go a mile, he said, here's what you do. He said, you go with them too. You go with them too. You know what he's teaching right there? He's teaching don't just do what is required of us. Don't just do what is required of us. He said, why don't you go a little bit farther? Why don't somebody, why don't, when, when does anybody want to go beyond the call of duty? When does anybody want to go the extra mile? Do we have any, do we have any second mile Christians in the church? Do we have any Christian, second mile Christians in the balcony? You know what I thought about all day long yesterday, Miss Christian, all morning today? You know what I've been thinking about? I'll tell you what I've been thinking about. Brother Bennett, I've been thinking about that nobody lined up to go the second mile because most of us are upset we've had to go the first mile. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Nobody's lined up. Nobody's volunteered. Nobody's going the second mile because most of us are too upset with the first mile that we have to go and we can't go the second mile because with Brother Joseph we haven't even traversed the first mile. Said, I still don't know what you're talking about. Well, uh, I'm talking about doing more than what your obligations are. Doing more than what your responsibilities are. I'm talking about doing more than what the law requires. Thank God we're saved by what? Grace. Amen. And grace operates in our heart and when grace operates in our heart we'll want to go the second mile I said we'll want to go the second mile I said preacher what in the world what in the world preacher what are you talking about going the second mile well let me just give you an illustration alright well everybody's supposed to go to church on Sunday morning that's first mile that's first mile anybody want to go Sunday night that's second mile and that's Wednesday night somebody help me everybody believes in tithing everybody Everybody believes in tithing. That's first mile. That's first mile. That's first mile. But does anybody want to step on into offerings? I said, do you want to step on into offering? I'm talking about not only going the first mile, I'm talking about going the second mile. I'm not talking about doing what's required of it and what's mandatory of it and what everybody thinks our responsibilities are. I'm talking about going beyond all that. I'm talking about exceeding our expectations. I'm talking about Miss Stephanie going the second mile. That's what he's talking about. Give me some illustrations. How about we say this so much? We say this so much. We say it all the time. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. If there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. We don't mean that. You know what I found out? Ain't nobody doing nothing. That's the second mile. The second mile says, I'm not only praying for you, and there's anything I can do for you. The second mile Christian says, you know what? Without even having to be asked, without even having to be asked, I'm going to do something for you. The first mile Christian says, what about our elderly? What about our sick folk? What about our shut-ins? What about our widows? Let's pray for them. Let's ask God to help them. Let's make sure God is on their side, and he is. But don't nobody want to visit them. Don't nobody want to go mow the grass. Don't nobody want to take them to town. Don't nobody want to check on them. Don't nobody want to go the extra mile. I knew it'd get quiet. Oh, we're all concerned about them. We, we're praying for our elderly. We're praying for our sick folk. We're praying for our shut-ins. 
We're praying for our widows. And if anybody, if they need anything, if they need anything, please let us know. If we can do anything for you, let us know. Talk's cheap, friend. Talk shit. Jesus said if somebody's compelling you to go one mile, why don't you go two miles? It's been so long. It's been so long for some of you that you even thought about anybody else. It's been so long for some of you that you've ever done anything for anybody else. You're like a sponge. You're like a sponge. You're soaking all of God's goodness and all of God's blessing and all of God's rich mercy on your life. And now you're going to stagnate and you're going to stink and you're going to uh, get moldy and bacteria and mildew. I say to you today, God has been good to us and God has blessed us and God has smiled on us. Why do we got to keep it to ourselves? Why don't we check on somebody? Why don't we visit somebody? Why don't we take them to town? Why don't we mow some grass? Why don't we bake them a cake? Why don't we send them a car? Why don't we show up at their house? Why don't we go the second mile? Why don't we go the second mile? We want everybody to go the second mile for us. I said we want everybody to go the second mile for us, but we're not willing to go the second mile for anybody else. Gonna get quieter, I can tell you that. What about forgiveness? You know what forgiveness is? Forgiveness is the first mile. Forgiveness is the first mile. That's what's required of us. I said that's what's required of us. Forgiving those that offend us. Forgiving those that upset us. Forgiving those that injure us. Forgiving those that do us wrong. Forgiving those that may have hurt us or hurt our family or hurt our husband, our wife, our children, our infants, our little ones. Forgiveness is the first mile. It's the first mile. And everybody says, oh, I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. But has anybody ever, ever went the second mile and said, not only do I forgive, but I'm going to restore fellowship with that person? See what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about Old Testament living here. I'm talking about New Testament living. The first mile is forgiveness. The first mile is our obligation. The first mile is what God's word instructs us to do. Somebody help me. That's what God's word instructs us to do. You say, well, I've done all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You haven't, you haven't fellowship with them. You haven't tried to reconcile with them. You haven't done anything for them. You haven't sent them a card. You haven't sent them a gift card. You don't even speak to them still. I knew they'd get quiet. Hey, friend, does anybody want to be a second mile Christian? Does anybody want to go beyond the call of duty? Does anybody want to go the second mile? What kind of Christians are we? I wonder if we got arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict us? Would there be enough evidence to convict us? I'm asking you today, is anybody interested in going the second mile? We can forgive people all day long, but I'm not so sure forgiveness is really taking place until we make an effort to restore fellowship. I'm not sure that forgiveness is really taking place until we make sure we're reconciled. I'm not for sure forgiveness is really taking place when we still can't fellowship and talk to one another and have something to do with one another and one of one one I want to be around each other or we avoid somebody or we look down at the floor or we look at the lights and on and on and on and on and on. You say, you haven't been where I've been. You don't know what you're talking about. You haven't experienced what I've experienced. You haven't been hurt like I've been hurt. You haven't been through this situation. Well, I probably have not, but there's probably a hundred thousand more that was before you that have been through that situation. There is no temptation taken out but such as is common to man but God is faithful what I'm saying is it's okay to forgive it's alright to forgive and we should forgive somebody say amen we should forgive honey you ought to notify your face right now because if it freezes that way it's going to be horrific say amen Woo, it's going to be horrific Woo, it's going to be terrible Woo, if you turn to stone we're going to remember what you look like for all of eternity See, I'm telling you, listen, I'm not stupid. 
When you talk about these kind of subjects that I'm talking about right now, let's get down there to where we live, friend. Yeah. Again, I can preach about the blood, and I can preach about redemption, I can preach about salvation, and I can preach about justification, and we might have been running the aisles. We might have been. Some of you weren't ready. Some of you are ready, and I'm glad you're ready. I mean, I'm glad you're ready, and I'm all for it. I'm all for it. We could, Brother Connor, we could be running the aisles and swinging from the chandelier, and I love all that. Maybe we'll do that tonight. But what about practical, everyday Christian living? What about what about putting our put what about spiritually? What about putting our money where our mouth is? What about really living for God? What about really being that kind of a genuine? I mean, non hypocritical, a spirit-filled, God-filled Christian that doesn't retaliate, that doesn't insist on their own way, and that brother and sister I will go beyond the call of duty and go beyond what's expected of it and be willing to help those in need. I'm talking about, does anybody in Mountain View Baptist Church on the lower level, on the balcony, does anybody ever want to be a second-mile Christian? Amen. Now, if you will be so kind, by the way, we only had one song. You know what that means, right? That means 10 more minutes of preaching. Amen. Now, if you'll be so kind, let's look again at verse number 41. I'm going to show you something. And whosoever shall compel thee. Go a mile. Jesus said, go with him twain. Now what is that talking about? Did you know that the Jewish populace, Brother Larry Newsom, the Jewish people were overlorded, controlled, and conquered by the Romans. You know that, right? Conquered by the Romans, Miss Andrew, even in this day, of which Christ lived. And this principle of verse 41, Brother Stewart, it reflects on a Persian, goes all the way back to the, to the empire of Persia, on a Persian and a Roman custom, a Persian and a Roman custom. Officials, Brother Ben, could demand, they could demand that people act as slaves. In other words, forced labor, forced labor constrained to serve the king, constrained to serve the, the hierarchy, Brother David, constrained to serve those that are in charge, the Romans, all right? How, how could they be constrained? They were, they were compelled, verse number 41, to provide personal attendance or a horse, a carriage, oftentimes at their own inconvenience, when official business of the government required their services. You know this, Brother Derry, Brother Philip, but post office were not then known in that day and hour. No post office. And so in order that the royal commands or the edicts or the, the laws or the communication of the Roman government, in order that they, Brother Joseph, could be spread throughout the kingdom, look what they did. At every other installment or station, they placed an, a horseman or an individual sort of like the Pony Express. Brother Randy, they placed, placed a horseman that was stationed at proper intervals on the major highway, on the public highway. And here's how they'd communicate. If they had an edict, if they had a law, Brother John White, if they had a declaration to get out to the kingdom and to be read by the town herald or the town crier, they would get that in the hand of the Roman authority that was delegated to, 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 to on a horse to travel and to go and to spread that edict or that command. Well, in the midst of all that, Brother Nathan, if that person on that horseback conducting official business Miss Jackie trying to get out the word or even had a lot of baggage and a lot of luggage at any time according to this Roman law and this Roman at any time they needed help or they needed assistance. They could compel a Jewish person. Hey, come here. I want you to go this next mile. I want you to help me with this baggage. I want you to help me with the luggage. 
I want you to help me with this declaration. I want you to go a mile to the next drop-off point. But here's what Jesus said. If they're compelling you and they're making you and they're constraining you, I want you to look to them and say, hey, I just want you to know I'm going to be willing to go two miles. I'm willing to go further. And you know why I thought about that, Brother Josh? Here's a Roman soldier. He's mean. He's hateful. He's arrogant. He's on the king's business. Brother Mark Jordan, he doesn't care about the Jews. He's traveling. He's being a communication vehicle, communication individual. He compels a person to go. You're going with me. You're going to help me. And then at the end of that mile, that person, the Roman says, you're free. You can go on back to where you came from. Miss Pam, he looks at him and says, that's okay. It's okay. I'll go another mile with you. You know what got me, Miss Christa, about everything I'm fixing to say? You know what got me right there? I wonder what went through that lost, hell-bent soul's mind right. when he said, oh, my goodness. I've compelled you to go one mile, and here you are willingly and lovingly and submissively and out of a voluntary spirit, yep. you are willing to go the second mile. Oh. I bet the conversation hushed. I bet it was pretty quiet, Brother Loving. I bet it really got a hold of that man's thoughts. I bet Miss Christie, he rode along and thought, what kind of people are these people? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of people? What, what, what possessed him to do that? There's no money. Everybody okay? Yeah. Brother yeah. Motley Jr., there's no money involved. There's no compensation, Miss Gail Walford. There's no remittance. There's no payment. There's no, uh, there's no favors. There's nothing going to become good of this. I'm not going to show you no favor in the future, but here you are. Here you are, Brother Pearson, two Brother Pearson. Here you are. You've, only, you've already been constrained to go one mile, and now you're telling me that you're willing to go twain. You're willing. I'm thinking, Brother Randy, I'm thinking it probably it wouldn't be surprise me if some of them went three miles or they went four miles. I wonder, Brother Ronnie, what it did to those hard-crusted, mean-spirited, arrogant, lost individuals and they saw this submissiveness and saw this gentle spirit and saw this Christ-like spirit and I'm thinking maybe, Brother David, they'd ride down the road and say something like, you must be one of them people. What do you mean, them people that of the way? That must be what you are. Maybe you're one of those Christians and that person could say, yes, sir, I am. I am a Christian. You see what God was doing? Does everybody see what God was doing? God was saying, I want you to shine as a bright light. I want you to reflect the, 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 the I want you to reflect the goodness and the grace of God. I want others to see Jesus in you. And that's a Roman uh, custom, uh, a Persian custom, a Roman law, Brother, Brother Herpel, a Roman statue imposed on Jewish people. I read also, Brother Mark, where sometimes they had to carry baggage and luggage, not only the first mile, Brother B, but they carried it the second mile. No four-wheeler, no, no ATV, no little car, no scooter, no cart, no bike on their back. They're carrying it not only the first mile, they're carrying it the second mile. What for? Because God said the people of the kingdom, the people of righteousness, they have a different disposition. They've got a different attitude. They've got a different spirit. They've got a different mindset. They don't think like, act like, look like, dress like, talk like, behave like. The people of the world, they are different. I'm asking Mountain View Baptist Church this morning. I'm asking my family. I'm asking your family. I'm asking every family, every individual on that balcony. I'm asking every individual on this lower level. Does anybody want to be a second mile Christian? Second mile. In the Lord's day, this is Matthew 5, 41. In the Lord's day, the Romans had the right to press both men and beasts into compulsory service when the interest of the government required it. And that's what that verse is all about. But yet, Brother Jimmy Owens, they turn around and say, you know what? I'll go the second mile. I'll go the second mile. I'll tell you what a famous person said, and He's not my hero, and he's not your hero, but I'm quoting him, Mr. Roger Staubach. 
one time quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Can you believe he think he said something I'm fixing to tell you? Roger Staubach, a successful, super, probably Super Bowl winning quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys in years gone by. You know what he said? I'm quoting him. He said, there are no traffic jams along the extra mile. How true. How true. There are no traffic jams along the extra mile. Sir, you know, honest, sir, I'll tell you, sir, you know, when it comes to your marriage and your life and your family, most of us are not willing to go the second mile because we haven't even went the first. When it comes to our church involvement, our church dedication, and our church commitment, I think many of us are struggling with the second mile because we really haven't even went the first mile. Really preaching Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and preaching in prayer rooms, really preaching the prayer rooms and preaching really Sunday school, preacher Sunday school and they want us to visit and they want us to love people and care about people and really preaching to get involved in the choir and the youth choir and, and really you want people to tithe and give offerings. No, you don't have to do any of it. You don't have to do any of it. So you need not worry about the second mile if that's your attitude because you haven't even gone the first mile. Let me ask all of you a question. Don't answer me out loud because it'll be so loud it'll probably knock me backwards. Have you ever been hurt? Have you ever been hurt? Okay. Did you forgive? Did you forgive? I think I have. Well, let me just go ahead and ask you, take yourself a test. Did, did you do ever, after you forgave, after you forgave, after you forgave, did you ever do anything positive for that individual? That's the second mile. That's the second mile. Jesus, if, if my brother offends me, how many times should I forgive him? Seven? Oh, no, no. Seven times 70 in one day. That's 490 times in one day. Second mile. Sec, second mile Christians, second mile Christians not only forgive, second mile Christians do everything in their power to restore fellowship. Hey. I said they restore fellowship. Second mile Christians don't stay mad for 20 years. Second mile Christians don't carry an alt to the grave. Second mile Christians don't go through life hating people. They don't go through life hating people. Second mile Christians leave it in God's hands, amen? They leave it in God's hands. But they do, you know what else they do? They go beyond what's expected of them. They, they take it a step further. Does anybody want to be that? Does anybody like to be a second mile Christian? You know what? You know what? You know what uh, Paul told Philemon? He said, "I wrote to you." He said, "Knowing that you'll do even more than what I ask." He said that to Philemon. That was a second mile Christian. What about our marriages? What about our marriages? What about our homes? What about our relationships with our, with our spouse? What about our children? What about our friends? The longer I live, Brother Barry, the longer I live, I'm finding out some things. I'm finding out, I'm finding out that there's a lot of needs and a lot of homes and a a lot of families. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. A lot of needs and a lot of homes and a lot of families. I'm on the receiving end of emails. I'm on the receiving end of texts. 
I'm on the receiving end of phone calls. I'm on the receiving end of counseling, trying to help people. Almost weekly, Brother Kevin, weekly, weekly. You just wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe how many needs there is even in the homes and families of Christianity. And Brother Dennis, we need not think about the second mile in this area until we do the first mile. Let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes. Let's ask the Lord to speak to all of our hearts. Brother Ben, would you come up here and pray with us, please, sir? Ask God to take these truths. Maybe a challenge, maybe a challenge that we, several are already coming, that's great. Maybe a challenge that God would help us to be a second mile Christian, Brother Ben. God, we love you this morning. God, we thank you for your preaching. God, thank you for your, for your conviction, God, that finds a resting place in our heart. Mm -hmm. God, I ask you, Lord, would we find a place of repentance? And God, we'd turn to you, God, and be a better Christian for you. Help God, us, Lord. realizing, God, that there's a dark and there's a lost and a dying world around us. God, it's watching our reaction, God, the way we handle every situation. God, I ask you, God, for forgiveness, God, for those things that we've done that would cause the enemies of God to blaspheme. And I ask you, God, you'd help our church, God, to be second-mile Christians. God, we have a wonderful, God, a wonderful example of a second-mile person in our Yes, Savior. God, yes. God, who went the second mile and went a little further for us. And God, even now, God intercedes on our behalf. God, thank you, God, for being our example. God, would you help us, God, as the people of the Mountain View Baptist Church, God, to find a place, God, along with you, God, reevaluate, God, what we're doing in this last God, day. God, grant it, Lord. God, and grant God, it. God, would you see us and teach us, God, to go, God, a little further. God, to do more. A little more. further, yes. God, to get yes. more. God, men, women, boys, and girls into this place where they can hear the gospel. Lord, help us to be a light, God, in a dark, dark and dying world. God, help us to reflect, God, the Son. And Lord, turn the light on this world. Please, morning. Lord, please. God, we need your help. And God, I admit in myself, God, that I can't do it, and I ask you, God, through me, God, would I submit my will to you, and you would run your, your, your will into my life, and I ask it in Christ's name, and through the blood we pray, amen. Let's stand and sing. Several are here. Would you like to join them? Let's sing. Page 337. Sing it. Sing it, everybody. Bless me not, O gentle Savior. Sing it. Sing it. Hear my humble cry. Follow others. Why? 